Okay, what is up guys? Welcome back to another video. For those of you new, my name is Wade. I'm a fourth year medical student at Vitz Medical School. So if you're looking for some more med school related content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Today I wanted to talk about research in medical school and specifically research as part of the Vitz Graduate Entry Medical Program. Let me take this back to the beginning. So in GEMP 1 or third year medicine at Vitz, you are placed into small groups. And as part of these small groups, this is where you will practice all of your clinical skills. This is where you will do all of the cases as part of your program. So every block you have certain cases to do, you do this as part of the small group. Any nursing visits or community clinic visits or any hospital rotations you do as part of this group. And the same thing applies to the research. So the research that you do as part of the VITS camp is not an individualized report that you submit. It's something that is done as part of a small group. Also part of the GAMP 1 and GAMP 2 program, right throughout GAMP 1 and GAMP 2, you have a lot of classes on evidence-based medicine. So these classes kind of introduce you to the idea of research, how to approach research, how to understand research, how to conduct your own research. So you will look at things such as introduction to statistics, different types of sampling, different types of data analysis, different ways to collect data, and so on and so on and so on. Pretty much everything you need in order to conduct a research report. At the beginning of GEMP 2, you also have a number of classes on how to approach research as a topic. So how to get your research questions, how to identify your aims and your objectives, what are your hypotheses, how to collect your data, how to analyze that data, how to draw conclusions, and you know, pretty much, again, everything that you need in order to do research as part of your medical degree. The research that you do, you start in GEMP 2, you also work on it in GEMP 3, and then it contributes towards your GEMP 4 mark. So to break that down into normal terms, you start off in your fourth year of medicine, you continue with your research in your fifth year of medicine, and it counts towards your sixth and final year of medicine mark as well. How the research works in the program is each year there are a number of topics that are given to the students. So I think this year we had about 70 or just over 70 topics. There's obviously a number of the small groups making up your year, and it's pretty much a first come first serve basis. So they give out these topics, you sit with your group, you decide on your top three choices. Then one day they will open up a form where you get to submit your top three choices and it pretty much works on first come first serve. Because there are quite a few small groups and relatively limited research topics, uh, it's quite a mad rush to see who gets what. So to put in perspective, this year my group submitted our top three choices within one minute, within a minute of the forms opening and every single one of those topics was allocated already. So you might end up with a topic that maybe you're not the most interested in doing, but my advice to this is to approach it as a learning experience. I know for a fact that when we were given our research topic for our group, it wasn't one of the topics that I was particularly interested in. That being said, the more that I've researched and looked into it and understood the topic, the more interesting it becomes. And I think that's true for any topic that you're given. Perhaps it's not something in your realm of immediate thinking. For instance, I would have been interested in doing something to do with one of the surgical departments or emergency medicine or something like that, which is not the case. But I would say keep an open mind to the topic that you're allocated and do as much as possible when you're as part of that group. Try and understand the topic as much as you can. Try and become an expert on the topic. That's what they always advise us in doing when doing research. And I'm pretty sure that the more that you investigate the topic and the application of what you're studying, it will become more interesting to you. I think I'll just place up here basically a breakdown of how our research report is marked at the moment. Obviously, bear in mind that this is how things are now. And when you get into the GEMP program, things might change. But basically, this is how things are broken down at the moment. 20% of your research mark comes from your protocol presentation. We just did our research protocol presentation this week, and I'll be honest with you, it was one of the more nerve-wracking experiences I've had so far in medical school. How the research protocol presentation works is you have to do a presentation for 10 minutes to a research committee. This committee can consist of doctors as part of the department, different doctors from different departments, people from uh, the ethics department as well, so they can oversee your topic. So basically you do a 10 minute presentation of your topic, explaining why you're doing your research, giving a bit of a uh, introduction to the literature review, and then telling them how you're gonna conduct your study. What study is it gonna be? How are you gonna collect your data? What sample are you including? And so on. 
After the 10 minute presentation, there's 10 minutes of questioning from the panel. So they can ask you pretty much anything to do with your research. They can ask you why you decided to do this topic. Have you thought about these ethical considerations? How are you gonna analyze your data? What stats are you gonna use? So it was quite a nerve wracking experience. But the interesting thing is that this research protocol presentation makes up 20% of your research mark. Well, at least it does at the moment. So before your research has technically been given the green light to actually proceed, so before you've done any data collection, before you've spoken to a single participant in your study, you're already marked on 20% of your research report. So I think generally you will do this protocol presentation by July of your Chem 2 year. And then once you do that, you need to submit your document to ethics. They will give you approval to, to progress with your study and then you can start with the data collection and so on. I think an important thing to note here is that 20% of your research report comes from a peer evaluation. So I did mention before that this is a group project. And as part of that group, you will be marked by everybody in that group according to your contribution. And 20% of your research report comes from this. So it's obviously heavily weighted. And I think it's there to make sure that people as part of that group pull their weight and contribute as much as possible to the actual research process. I'm sure everybody's worked as part of a group where somebody just doesn't want to do anything. So you kind of have to carry them along with the project. So this is just kind of there to make sure that the group works together, that not one person carries the project, that everybody contributes as a group. I think it's also heavily weighted because in the grand scheme of things, medicine is not an individual practice. You will always be a part of a team. And I think this kind of just fosters the introduction into working as part of a team. Even though it could be difficult at times, people clash heads on how to approach a certain topic. People might not want to work, so you're going to have to be a sort of disciplinarian in that kind of situation. So I think this is one of the first instances where we're put into a team situation and we have to learn how to work as a team and to contribute to a team to make sure that the work gets done. Another 20% of your research comes from another presentation that you have to do. So once you've conducted your research, you need to do a second presentation where you present all the findings of your research. So that means that 40% of your research comes from two presentations. So take the presentation seriously. Uh, prepare for them. Uh, it is very nerve-wracking, obviously, so just make sure that you prepare for the actual presentations. Try and foresee what questions they'll come up with for your research. I know that as part of our group, we were taken a bit by surprise by some of the more obvious questions which we just didn't think of, which we should have. So we, we kind of went into more depth about maybe they'll ask us on the stats or maybe they'll ask us on data collection, whereas they actually asked us very simple, straightforward, logical questions which I think gets overlooked quite often in designing a study. And then the last 40% of your mark comes up from the actual research report that you submit. So that makes up the full 100%. And as I said, this mark contributes to your GEM4 year or your sixth and final year of medicine. In terms of the research topics, this is pretty much as broad as you can imagine. You get a number of topics from surgical departments, cardiothoracic surgery, vascular surgery, pediatric surgery. You'll have a few from emergency departments. You'll get quite a bit from family medicine and public health. Then you'll also get a lot of topics, funny enough, which I wasn't expecting from ENT. So our research that we're doing as part of our group falls under ENT, which is not something I've ever really thought of before. So I must be honest, when we were given our topic, I wasn't exactly excited. It wasn't something that I was outwardly interested in. But as I mentioned, the more that I've looked at the research, the more that I've contributed towards it and investigated it, the more interesting it becomes and the more I can see the applicability of it and the excitement of conducting the research. Just to give a quick overview of the research that we're conducting as part of our group, we were initially going to look at tongue strength in people who have had a glossectomy. So this is where you have part of your tongue removed. So it could be due to cancer or trauma or anything like that. You might think, okay, well, why measure tongue strength? So we're looking at tongue strength because I don't think people understand the importance of their tongue until they've actually had an injury to their tongue. So just try and think about the last time you put your tongue while you were eating, how painful that was. And then think about how it impacted your ability to eat, to chew, to swallow, to speak. Um, and that's just the bite on the tongue. Now imagine if you have to have half of your tongue removed completely. How is that gonna affect your life? What happens if you have a stroke and you lose all the strength in your tongue? How is that gonna affect your life? And importantly, it can have life-threatening conditions because the tongue is involved in swallowing and if you can't swallow properly, you can aspirate and it can go into your lungs and you can die. Or you can get an obstruction in your throat and you can die. 
So these are things that I didn't really think about just from the topic, tongue strength and glycectomy. Our topic has kind of evolved a little bit more to designing our own instrument to measure tongue strength in South Africa because the instruments that are available at the moment are very, very, very expensive and are not really available through most in our context. So we're looking at designing a novel method to do this, which is quite interesting because if this works, that means that you've designed a new method to measure something across our context. Ideally, what we're looking at doing is implementing this using instruments that are available in any clinical situation, whether it's in ICU or a community clinic or whatever you're thinking, this material should be there in those settings. So technically, these materials can be used to measure tongue strength in any patient across our country without having to look at exorbitant costs or anything that excludes patient care. So yeah, that's pretty much the research overview as part of the VITSCAN program. It takes two years to do. Uh, it's very interesting. You do stand the opportunity of being published, having a published research article, which again just adds to the stature of having it behind your name. Can you imagine qualifying with more research behind your name? And obviously as a doctor, you're encouraged to do as much research as possible. So I think it's a great introduction into doing research for those who haven't done it before. It's great introduction to working as part of a team into working with a supervisor and interacting with professionals already. For instance, we're interacting with heads of departments and people that are experts in the field, which is crazy to think about because we're just fourth year students. But my one piece of advice is no matter what topic that you're given as part of the VITSCAM program research report, approach it with an open mind and try and enjoy every step of the way. Try and learn as much as you possibly can and contribute as much as you can to the project. If you have any questions related to the VITS game program, please leave them in the comment section below. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And as always, I will see you in the next video.